Hi, I'm Josh Ibarra, and this is EDO 853, Module 8, um, the case study, get this child out of my room. Um, just a quick overview of the situation. You have a new special education coordinator who is right out of college named Susan, and she is taking over for a person who was there for 25 years, uh, so already a tough position to be in. She has to travel 30 miles one way each day. Uh, to get to this school because it's a rural area um, and she lives 30 miles away. Carl Hughes is a student that is having issues in class and he is has an IEP um, and it's, it's behavioral issues. It's not really an academic situation. Um, he's gone from just kind of self-inflicting issues to now acting out towards the teacher, uh, Mrs. Taylor. And one of the examples it gives is he sharpens a pencil and throws it at Mrs. Taylor's head. Um, so there's concern for safety. Carl's parents were recently divorced, I think within the last three months. And since then, his behavior has gotten worse. So um, you're going to see where this plays a big issue in my mind in this whole situation. Mrs. Taylor is the classroom teacher that wants Carl removed from class immediately. She is the one having the issues, and she is the one who has come to Susan about this. Um, but Susan wants to kind of work out a plan of action that doesn't require removing Carl from the classroom. Um, I think that's kind of the last option that she wants to have because she believes that it's not going to fix anything. So uh, the school is very unique. It's a very um, wide district. Um, I feel like from reading it, there are no principals in the buildings. You have a superintendent that oversees all the different schools in the district and makes his rounds and visits each school you know, on a daily, or not every school on a daily basis, but for one school, one day, one school the next day. And then he has assistant, assistant superintendents within the school that act, I guess, as like principals. And they are full-time teachers who assume this role as well, which is already, in my mind, a terrible, terrible situation because there's no way that, um, even if it's technically an assistant principal position, the principal is only there once a week and um, the assistant principal cannot be teaching a full class load or and the principal either and still be I guess required or um, expected to handle the disciplinary issues in that school um, well so anyway just kind of a weird situation if you ask me I understand that you know they did this for money monetary monetary reasons you know budget cuts I'm sure but uh, just kind of an, an odd situation okay so as far as category one identify the problem uh, just like I said, Carl needs, our Carl is um, a special needs student and he's showing this very aggressive behavior towards the teacher. So far it is just towards the teacher and she even gives an example of throwing rocks at teachers. So there's other teachers involved as well. Um, but it hasn't branched out to other students yet. Parents are going through a tough divorce. It apparently is very heated during um, the divorce hearings. Um, Mrs. Taylor wants him out immediately, wants him basically put into a, the resource room and kept there. She doesn't want him in class because she's afraid that it's going to get worse. He's a very, I think, large kid for his age and she can't control him, especially when he gets, uh, gets angry. A SPED teacher um, is working on a plan and would prefer inclusion and wants to compromise with Mrs. Taylor. Um, and then mom and dad, you know, I think mom is really trying hard. It sounds to me she's in a very tough situation, working 50 hours a week, um, doesn't have time to spend with her kids. Carl's the youngest of three, and the other two have behavioral issues as well. But uh, she's very tired um, and exhausted and very upset from the divorce. Dad seems to not care that much, just wants the easiest solution. I think mom is just willing to agree with whatever they say because she she's tried what she can and just cannot um, do anything. Plan of action. 
I believe what Susan is trying to do is the right plan. I think Mrs. Taylor is being very pushy initially and in expecting things that you can't normally or can't really do. Uh, I think that Susan is actually doing a, as good of a job as she can. She talks with the superintendent. Well, actually, she first talks with Mrs. Taylor, tries to calm her down a little bit, and tries to work with her. Then talks with the superintendent, um, and then puts a plan of action together. Um, to kind of deal with this. Um, the only thing that it doesn't mention here that, that I think I would look into is talking to other teachers to see if there's anything they do that works with Carl or if he's still acting that way. They're just kind of dealing with it. I, I feel in here in our school that's something that happens. That we'll have a meeting. Okay, what is going on? Here's the situation. Um, is there anybody else having this issue? If so, then we can kind of progress to the next step. Um, I think you could have Mrs. Taylor work on some behavioral strategies that may work if you can figure out, figure what, if, talk to other teachers and figure out some behavioral strategies that work for them. You know, some teachers may get along because they could talk to them about something outside of school. Maybe he likes cars, maybe he likes uh, sports, maybe he likes fishing, whatever. Talk to them about those things. Build that relationship. Um, seeking professional help for Carl is maybe the next step beyond that. You know, talk to the parents about that. You know, how would you feel? Just talking with our counselor, you know, um, and maybe even, you know, the troubles at home. You know, it sounds like mom is having a lot of issues. Dad's probably not going to be as cooperative, but maybe talk with mom about, uh, if you know, asking if she needs some help. You know, do you need any help with anything? Do you need us to, I mean, obviously the school is only kind of, has some limitations, but, you know, what what is going on at home? Is there, you know, do we need any know more or, or what the case may be? So the plan of action, I think Susan has the right idea. It's unfortunate that there's no principal in the building because I think that would help the situation out tremendously. Uh, fixing the issues and promoting success. Uh, safety is by far the number one goal here, um, whether it's for the teachers or, in my mind, more importantly, the students, um, making sure that everybody is safe, even Carl, um, because if there's a situation where he's, you know, it says that he, he'll inflict um, like self-inflicting uh, abuse at times. So you want to make sure that everybody is safe. Work with Mrs. Taylor. Make sure that it's cl uh, the class is safe, um, that that her classroom is the least restrictive environment, and you know for not just Carl but all the students. Documentation. If Mrs. Taylor can document everything that is happening with Carl, you know, write it down, date, time. You know, this happened. This is what how I dealt with it, and this is how he responded to that then she can reflect on that and then she can t bring that to whether it be the assistant superintendent or the or Susan the SPED coordinator or talk to some other teachers and what did you do once again communication is a huge huge part of this so um, that documentation can be very important and making her realize that that's very important appreciate uh, the collaboration between Susan and Nancy and I, you know here's the thing I I think they do try and collaborate but I think that Nancy could be more open to what Susan is trying to do uh, I understand she just is fed up with it, and I understand that it is very dangerous, but, you know, just removing him from the classroom immediately may not be the best thing to do either. So um, try and take some of that in, in um, workload off of your assistant superintendent, who obviously is a full-time teacher in this situation. So they may not have a lot of work or a lot of time to work on this as well as your superintendent who's covering so many different schools so if you can work together and collaborate and not just those two but the rest of the teaching staff to figure this out then that would be that would go a long way okay category four debrief the problem uh, my experience with our our sped coordinators here our special education coordinators have been very positive we have some extremely good special education coordinators, paras, and that's another question I have, you know, are there paras available that could help with Carl's situation? I understand not, you know, sitting him in the resource room all day, that's not what the, what that resource room is for, but do you have paras that could be in class with him all day that could help with the documentation, can help with 
um, a situation if he's getting out of control um, and maybe build a tighter relationship with him than maybe that teacher has the opportunity to do. Uh, we have we have that situation. We're very lucky that we have uh, paras in a very strong special education program to deal with, you know, any kids that are having, whether it be a learning situation, an academic situation, or a behavioral situation. So the issue um, at home definitely needs to be addressed. And this, it's really not the school's job, but it falls on us most of the time. So if we can figure out how to you know, soften that up because they're very explosive. You can see with the mom when they have the meeting, she gets very angry at the dad immediately. It sounded like the, the divorce hearing was very heated. So there's obviously anger issues that are coming down from that situation as well. Um, the school has to be willing to do whatever they can to help their students succeed. And whether it's Carl, who is struggling behaviorally, or a kid who is a straight-A student who is very well-mannered uh, or very well-behaved, you have to care about all of them the same. Uh, promote success and, <clears throat> and well-being. Um, safety is priority number one. Um, you've got to make sure that all of our classrooms are safe for all students. A SIP meeting um, to determine how to best handle this. Once again, meet with all the teachers. Figure out what works best with this kid. Meet with any parents that have worked with him and see what you know what you can do to work with this um, communication like I said very very big if the teachers can communicate with Mrs. Taylor maybe they can help her out with dealing with Carl but also help Susan out with dealing with Mrs. Taylor in a sense in this in you know saying hey look Susan's doing a great job here's what we do you know uh, we can all learn from one another so I, I'm big on communication. I think that you have to be open to um, communication and not with just your teachers, but your students, your paras, your, your um, board of education and your community. Uh, academic success, promote academic success. Providing an exceptional educational experience for our students is our main goal. Um, you've got to come up with different strategies. You've got to come up with different ways to reach kids. If Carl is acting out, maybe it's a situation where he just, you know, obviously he's upset at home, but if you can distract him from that, make school a positive distraction in a sense. Um, so, you know, I'm, I've gone to student uh, project-based learning, and I feel like it has given the kids an opportunity to learn information the way they want to, as well as information they want to learn so maybe if you do something to hey Carl you know what what are you really interested in and then go from there with it you know try and connect that to what you're teaching well-being of every child I'm, I'm hurrying now because I'm running out of time again safety inclusion you know I've talked about the safety issue it's got to be safe for the other students got to be safe for teachers the inclusion aspect yes you don't want to just put him in a room this isn't the way it used to be and they talk about how the former teacher would have just pulled him out put him in the resource room and give him a, wor a workbook that's not how this works anymore the idea of inclusion is a big part of our education our educational system so you've got to be willing to work with that um, different educational and instructional strategies i just mentioned that project-based learning may be something you look into uh, Escalation procedures and reentry procedures. They talked about, okay, when it gets escalated, we're going to pull him out, calm him down, put him back in. I think that's a great idea. And there's got to be these, re, you know, okay, this is what has to happen before you can go back to class. Okay. Um, documentation of behavior. Um, mentioned that with Mrs. Taylor. She needs to be documenting this stuff so they know what's going on. Um, and then the ex educational experience needs to be exceptional. You know, our motto here is accept, expect excellence. Um, and that's from everybody, not just students. It's, we've got to expect it from ourselves and from, you know, everybody involved. So um, if we can do that, then we can fix a lot of issues. Um, get better every day as far as your instruction is concerned. Professional development. This is something I've had to get better at. Um, and then treating your kids equally and all positively because some of them this is the only opportunity they have to be treated in a positive way this is the only positive thing they have in their lives sometimes so got to do that um sorry i kind of rushed through those last three i'm literally down in my last 15 seconds but this situation sounds like it was jammed from the beginning 
with no principal and a new SPED teacher trying to follow in the footsteps of a 25-year veteran. So I think Susan did a great job. Thank you.